Hello, Tom McGuire, welcome back. How's it going? It's been a little while. I've been reading a lot of books and I haven't done any reviews for a little while. I feel a little bit out of the habit. So um, obviously when we talk about personal development, which is what this channel is about, uh, it's really important that you kind of make sure you keep momentum, that you enforce, that you reinforce good habits with yourself. And yeah, so for me, I've been kind of like, I've been reading a lot. Um, it's been a really lovely sunny day today. And there's just been a few things that have just kind of taken my attention. I've just kind of forgotten to get on to to sort of get on to reviewing some of the stuff that I've read. So I apologise about that. But, uh, you know, I've got, I've got a few a few things in my mind at the minute, though. So I can, I, I will have a few, probably get a, a few reviews done fairly close together over the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, but this one, The Planets by Brian Cox. This is absolutely brilliant. This is a real game changer for me, particularly, you know, when it comes to personal development. This sort of, this sort of book you can read just for pure enjoyment, just if you've got any remote interest in space or astronomy whatsoever, I highly recommend it. Um, but if you are into personal development, which hopefully if you're watching this channel, you are. If you're new to this channel, hello. But um, that's mainly what this is about. So I read as many books as I possibly can. And I try and give you as honest a review as I possibly can and kind of relate it to personal development and how we can use it to sort of improve ourselves, basically. So I've read, I must have read a couple of hundred personal development books over the last sort of three years or so. Um, uh, personal development is not the only thing I read by any means. I read lots of different stuff. I read, I read fiction, although not quite as much. Non-fiction is kind of my main thing, probably. Um, but I, I read a lot. I read as much as I possibly can. A couple of books a week, quite often, most of the time. Um, but yeah, this one, even if you're not interested in personal development, it's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. It's really good. It's it's it was done. It was the, the planets was done on the BBC recently. Brian Cox presents that one. If you haven't seen that, I recommend it. It's really really good. The photography, the graphics, whatever it is, the pictures, just absolutely fantastic. And Brian Cox is is really good as well. What do you say? It's just it's the planets, isn't it? They're just it's just absolutely amazing. And th this book, just like I say, it's a complete game changer for me. I've always had a vague kind of interest in, in space and astronomy, but I've never actually done any astronomy. I've never bought myself a telescope or anything like that, although I kind of vaguely thought about it. My sister had one years ago and I used to look at the moon through that occasionally, but I really haven't ever really kind of like had the time, excuse me, to do it. But I'm so interested in it now after after reading this. So it's, it's absolutely brilliant. I got myself a pair of binoculars the other day and they... They reckon that binoculars are better than telescopes when you're a novice, you know, when you don't have a clue what you're looking at because you can glimpse up much more easy and you just get an idea of, of, of where stuff is in the sky. And you can actually, I saw Jupiter and Saturn yesterday through them because it's really clear at the minute. And that's just, for me, some people might find it boring, but I think it's amazing. I, I could see Jupiter, I could see a couple of the moons next to it. You know, you don't, through binoculars, you don't see the colours of Jupiter. It's just quite, it's just really bright looking and quite, it's different. It's very different to looking at a star, for example. But I could definitely see the moons to the side, um, and then looking at Saturn, it's kind of this goldy sort of colour. And it, it although it's through binoculars, I could get a sensation of it being a slightly different shape as well. At one point, I felt like I could vaguely see the rings. I'm not sure if that was just my mind kind of willing me to see it, but it really did feel like I could get a, you know, the, the shape suggested that I could see the rings basically. Obviously, with a proper telescope, you'd better see it. You'd better see them quite clearly, which would be which would be lovely. But I haven't got to that stage yet. But anyway, this book, let's keep to the review. It's boiling in here today. Sorry about that. <sighs> this book is just absolutely brilliant. I just think Brian Cox says at the end of the BBC programme, and he says in this book as well, because they're both very similar, um, you know, he, he gives this idea that we kind of need to look beyond the, beyond the end of our noses. We can't kind of just sort of limit ourselves to this tiny little speck of dust that we live on. When you take time to think about the universe and the size of it, it's absolutely mind blowing. It just makes you, it doesn't necessarily make you feel small, I don't think, because it depends on how you look at it. And I heard Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about this the other day, saying that when he looks up at the stars, he actually feels big because he feels as though the universe is within him. Because, you, you know, we come from these elements that exploded however long ago and space is us and we're space and we're all part of the same thing. And so he looks at it that way, but you could argue that we're kind of absolutely tiny and in insignificant, which in some ways is quite good when it comes to kind of meditating because like Marcus Aurelius used to do, you can actually take yourself above everything and kind of look down and just say, you know what, that idiot that's just cut me up or that person at work who's irritated me really isn't that important because actually when you think about it, we are literally bacteria crawling on a speck of dust in the grand scheme of things it's just absolutely crazy so i know it's hard it's easy to say that because everyone's reality is their reality if you've got some something difficult going on in your life 
you have to deal with it but it doesn't hurt just to kind of put things in, into perspective sometimes just kind of think about how small this planet is and how for me the potential of other things out there other worlds out there similar to ours maybe completely crazily different to ours i think it does you good to imagine that there are things beyond your imagination as well as intelligent and developed as we are we are like mark manson said just effing monkeys with screens at the end of the day um and we kind of it does us good to sort of think well maybe actually there are things that we just can't even imagine that are just so crazy that we can't even imagine them and I quite like that. I find it a bit scary, but I find it quite comforting as well. Because I think if everything was just simple and straightforward and, and kind of scientifically kind of definite, it would be a bit depressing, really. And it certainly isn't scientifically definite yet. We have nowhere near got to that stage. Um, so, yeah, that is that is Marcus Aurelius. So, he, so, like I say, he comes into it in terms of, going, you know, just this whole size of things and and i did a review on the book by donald robertson years ago how to think like a roman emperor and he talks about that in that one so check that check that book out that's really good um the stranger i haven't reviewed that book yet that's a book by albert camus um the guy who did the plague um and lots of others he's a french nigerian philosopher he's not alive anymore but he's really interesting and he has a quote in The Stranger, um, which goes like this. Gazing up at the dark sky, spangled with its signs and stars for the first time, the first, I laid my heart open to the benign indifference of the universe. I just think that's quite a nice quote there, really. Just thought I'd give you that just to think about, really. I'm not going to elaborate too much on it because I'll review that book at some point another time. Um, but yeah, this book, it just... <sighs> Sorry, we're like six minutes, nearly seven minutes in. I've barely talked about the book, have I? It's relevant though, it's all relevant to personal development. I just think it's, it's really opened my mind and it really, it's given me something else to think about rather than just rush, 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 thinking about goals and and work and business and life and kids and, you know, all of that stuff. It, it just gives me something else to get outside my head and think about the bigger scale of things and the planets and the stars. And I find, I find it really relaxing. I'd, I'd recommend it to anyone who just kind of wants to relax a little bit and just and chill out. It's a really nice hobby, I would say. So he talks about Venus and how Venus could have one day been like Earth. Um, and then something happened with global warming in a similar way that's what, you know, to what is happening here on Earth. And it's now a hellish atmosphere. It's like the hottest planet. It's even hotter than Mercury, even though it's not quite as close to the sun as Mercury. Um, it's about 400. Let's see if I can get this right. I think it's about 450, 460 degrees on the surface, whereas Mercury is about 420 or something. And I think Mercury drops to about minus 124 at night. Um, but anyway, Venus is like, is you know, it's like a hideous environment. Basically, it's ridiculously hot. It's ridiculously high pressure. The gravity is crazy. You wouldn't survive there for any time at all. But it's it's really scary to think that how many billions of years ago they reckon it could have been like like Earth. And I reckon there's a few places that could potentially have been like that and also a few places that could become like that as well. So when our sun eventually dies and becomes a red giant, that will mean that it grows to a red giant. And then actually planets and moons that are further out in the solar system, out towards the edges, that are actually really cold, will warm up. And they could potentially become then inhabitable for, for life, basically. Whether we'd ever be able to get that far, who knows? would you know and would we necessarily be around at that stage probably not but it gives you something to think about doesn't it i think there's the moon is it titan one of the moons of saturn i want to say saturn or is it neptune i think it's saturn actually um and it's yeah at the minute really cold but actually if the sun warmed up it could warm up and it could be they reckon there's research online to say that it could be another place that could be inhabitable i'm pretty sure it's saturn actually titan yeah um, but yeah, it's so interesting. You just do a bit of research online and it just... This this book talks about the solar system. Um, you know, the, the planets that we already, we already know, the Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. I think I just got those right in order, didn't I? What a geek. And then you've got Mackie Mackie and some other ones, these new ones they're discovering out in the Kuiper Belt and things. Um... Ah, God, it's just really good. So if you want more detail, if you want beyond that, then just look online. There's so much stuff. There's loads of stuff on YouTube as well. Some really interesting videos. Carl Sagan is a guy who's really worth looking up. 
and I am reading um, Becoming at the minute by Michelle Obama which I'm really enjoying. I've nearly finished that. I thought I'd give that a go because it gets crazy reviews but I'm about to read after that Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan um, and he he did that and he kind of, he, basically he's talking about how Earth was like this tiny little pale blue dot in the in the wilderness of space and yeah I'll review it when I read it but it's it sounds brilliant and he's really interesting he was kind of considered the astronomer of the people and really clever bloke and has done some really interesting stuff he's done some speeches on YouTube they're not speeches on you they've been put on YouTube they were done before YouTube existed but um really interesting and just gives you kind of perspective and and just talks about how you know how the human race is and where we're going and stuff just really really good he's done he's done a few books really really good um what else do I want to say um so yeah he, it talks about how Jupiter the biggest planet is kind of the godfather and Jupiter's kind of saved the earth before from kind of debris is it asteroids or meteors or, or whatever those things the flying bits of rock that could absolutely destroy us Jupiter's been there and has kind of deflected them through its gravity and things um so Jupiter has a, a massive role to play and it talks about the fact that the solar system is actually a system and it's in interdependent I really like that word because that's something that we use in personal development when we're talking about business and people working together in teams is interdependency so you know you've got dependency which you don't want you've got independency or independence which is better but interdependence is better again and this is Stephen Covey when he talks about seven when he's doing his seven habits for highly effective people so interdependency is supposedly the best because you're independent but you're also working with other people you're all dependent kind of on each other to a certain extent working together and it's kind of going for this sort of win-win situation so very loosely kind of bringing business to the solar system but you know what I mean so yeah, it's an interdependent system, which is which is interesting. Um, I've, I've there's loads of details, but I don't want to bore you too much with all of them. You read read the book; it's fantastic. They, 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 he tells you how um, how they're able to use science to kind of work out how old some of these planets are and things, which is absolutely fascinating as well. There's there's a hexagon at the at the pole of of Saturn which is a storm and it's actually, it forms an actual hexagon shape with sort of straight lines which is un unbelievable and they show how you can actually do that in certain circumstances I can't remember how but yeah so at the top it's a it's hexagon storm really bizarre um what else uh the, 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 yeah I think that's about it I've written a few notes for this one because it's just so interesting but yeah what a great book um highly recommended